Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. Now till this point we have seen the language fundamentals of Python, right? We have seen variables, how to pass a variable to a function, we have seen function, right? How to define function, how to call a function and then we moved towards module and now we know how to create different files. Now once we have talked about the language fundamentals, let's move towards the concepts. Now one of the concepts which is very important is OOPS, which is Object Oriented Programming. Now one of the unique selling point of Python, you know why Python is so famous because of this thing. Python supports all different programming paradigms, you know, it supports functional programming, it supports object oriented programming and it also works with procedure oriented programming. Now we have talked about procedure, right? What is procedure now is whenever you work with Python, we define functions, right? We call a function from a function. So if you want to create a software, you will break down your project into small, small part and those modules, small modules will be functions. Now Python is also functional programming. So functional programming basically means if you can achieve a certain task, implementing functions as a mathematical functions where you will not manipulate a data, which is instead of changing data, you will still accomplish a task. One of the way is you can pass a function to a function. You know, we have seen this. Again, we have a very deep concept of functional programming. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But time being, procedures and functions, which is something we have already done with example, lambdas. Now we are going for a concept of OOPS, now which is very famous in the industry, you know. So if you are working on big software, enterprise projects, you need to think everything in a format of objects. Now you might be thinking, why objects? We were happy with functions, right? Now see, even from start itself, I was, I'm talking about objects, right? Maybe in some programming I said, okay, this is an object, integer is an object. But then we were skipping that part. What is object and why it's so important? See, ultimately, if we talk about programming world, what we do is we try to solve a real world issue with the help of virtual world solution, right? So example, programming, software, everything is virtual world. Now in real world, we all use objects, right? Example, if I want to record this video, I need a camera. Right. If I want to call someone, I need a phone. If you want to type a code, you need a laptop. Right. So for everything, you need object. So in real world, everything is object. In fact, persons. Right. Example, if I have a company, if I want some work to be done, of course, I need employees. Right. And for me, every employee is an object. Right. So an employee object is using a laptop object. So some employee object needs an AC object. Right. So that's how thing works. Everything is an object. Even human, we treat them as object. Now what object will have? Object will have two things. Every object will have certain attributes and every object will have certain behavior. Now when I say attribute, you can imagine them as data or you can say properties. Example, my height is one attribute, my age is one attribute, my name is one attribute, the company I work for is one attribute, right? Everything is, those, those things are attribute. And then comes my behavior. I'm talking, I'm walking, I'm dancing. All these are behavior, right? So our actions defines our behavior. And then we have uh, attributes which we know. In other terms, you can say as an object, I know something. As an object, I do something, right? So I do something based on something which I know, right? So this is object. Object will have something where you can store data and object will have some behavior. Now this data which we normally use, those are variables, right? We have seen variables. So if you want to store something in object, we need to define variables. If you want to define the behavior, we need to use methods. Oh, that's something new now. What is method? Uh, we have done with functions, right? So functions in object oriented programming, they're called as methods. Right, so it's so simple. We have done all those stuff. The only change we have now is we need to think in an object term. See, object-oriented programming is not just about different syntax. It's also about the way you think. So now if you want to achieve anything in programming, you need to think about objects. So the moment you say you have a complex problem, think about the object, think about multiple objects and how can, how can you connect them? Right, because in OOPS we have so many concepts. One of the concepts is object, which we are going to see now. Uh, we have a concept of classes, we have a concept of encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism. Uh, I know weird words, right? But don't worry, we will be covering everything in detail in the subsequent tutorials. So there's one thing which is important to discuss here about classes, because we have an object and we have a concept of class. It doesn't matter which language you work on, maybe Java, C++, or C Sharp, whichever, whatever language which uses OOPS concept. You know we always use this thing which is object and class together but why why they are so important of course objects are important because whatever you want to do can be done with the help of object but why class is important 
Now think about this. When you, would, when you would see an object in real world, example, this camera, a fan, or a clock, right? All these things are manufactured, right? So in some factory, they have been manufactured. Or maybe you can talk about a phone. Now look at this phone. This is Motorola G3, okay? Now it's not the only phone available here, right? So a lot of people, they have this phone. So that means we don't have one object of Moto G3. We have thousands or millions of objects. I'm using any number here. So imagine we have 5 million of this type of phones, which is Moto G3. Now, of course, someone must have designed it, right? And all these phones have been manufactured somewhere. Maybe, maybe you can say all these phones are made in China, okay? So we have a factory in China who is producing all this phone. But then Motorola says it is their phone, right? Of course, we, are not, we don't say this is a China phone. We say this is a Motorola phone. Or we don't say, let's say the manufacturing is in India. We, so we don't say it's an Indian phone. We say it's a Motorola phone. Why? Because manufacturing is not important. You can manufacture stuff anywhere. What is important is where it has been designed. Okay, so this is designed by Motorola. But so even if you talk about this phone, this has been designed once and then they have manufactured multiple times. And that design in programming or in oops, we say class. So in a class, you will write a design of the object. Imagine there's some factory in your machine who will create these objects, okay? So you have to provide a design so that you will get the object. So that means class is a design and objects, they are real stuff, right? They are real entities, you can say. Or you can use another term called as instance. So you can imagine this is an instance of a class. That's awesome, right? So point to remember, class is a design or you can call them as blueprint. So if you have a class, you can manufacture thousands or billions of these devices. So that's about class and object. But how exactly we do that in programming, that we'll see in the next video. I hope you are enjoying this video. Let me know in the comment section. And do subscribe for further videos. So bye-bye.